We'll begin with step one of the four-speed transmission here today. The entire process begins with the installation proper of the main drive gear. Some folks prefer to call this a clutch gear. I call it the main drive gear, like the old Harley-Davidson manuals. Before we install any bearings or any seals, we need to set proper end play of this gear so that in turn it doesn't overheat or burn up. So we select, I, I recommend if you're building from ground zero, a selection of these various thrust washers for the respective gear. I select a thin one, I measure it. In our case here, we're talking 46 thousandths, 45 thousandths with the caliper. I place it on the main drive gear in its proper position. Now being I'm going for a final assembly here with this, the main race has been installed. Always check that the main race retaining ring is in the position prior to final assembly. Never move ahead without making sure that's installed. Okay, I've installed the respective thrust washer. Now this tool simulates bearings for end plate test only. So install this aluminum sleeve. In effect, I'm able to place this into the case. It's a little tricky, you wanna make sure that that main drive gear thrust washer is up into the graduation of the main race itself in the case. You can actually feel it kind of flop into position. Now I'll install, just like in a final assembly, I'll install the main drive gear spacer. There are no variables in this. This is only one size. I install that as such. And now our special tool here, that's our sprocket nut, and we have a spacer attached to it which simulates a sprocket. We don't wanna use a sprocket. In this case, it would be in our way for test and for final assembly. So this spacer is the same thickness as a sprocket. It simulates the entire assembly final. This is left-hand thread. We install it. A little tricky. And good hand firm tight. Now we check for end play with our main drive gear. As you can see, we're in good shape here. If that was tight, in effect, I'd pull this apart again and I would select a thinner sized thrust washer and try again. If it was way too sloppy, I would go up in graduation. So we're in good shape here. We're, we're ready to continue. Now we'll move to phase two. So we'll break, take this apart. We no longer need our tool for this application. We set it aside. We make sure our proper thrust washer is installed. Now we place it in. We're ready for bearings. This tool simulates the main shaft. This would be, in effect, third gear. Place this entire assembly, making sure that that thrust washer is in the recess of the main race in the case itself. Install it right over the top, as you see here. Now this is a brand new assembly, so in effect, we'll start with standard rollers. This has all been pre-fit. And we'll just kind of add a few. And again, for a final checkment, I like putting these in dry. In effect, I feed these in and stand these up with a proper pick device. I highly recommend something non-magnetic, or mag a magnetic piece fights you. You're pulling the bearing back out again after you've installed it. So you can either sharpen an old screwdriver, you know, small, tiny screwdriver, in effect, but you want to roll these into position, as you can observe what I'm doing here. So I kind of spilled some in and then I kind of just, you see how I stand them up again. As I stand them up, I rotate the main drive gear. All our rollers are installed proper as such. Nice and freewheeling. They are installed dry. 
We can now perform a final check. We'll install the main drive gear, less a seal, with our combination sprocket nut tool. So in turn, we now, I recommend a good quality assembly lube. We'll add a little lubricant. Again, this is a final assembly. Rotate a little. Locate a channel and apply a little assembly lube. Work it in. Rotate it down in the roller is good. You notice how quiet it gets now. Now we're ready to go. Now we install our set cork in on the graduation in the case itself. Make sure it rests proper. Now our final assembly here, main drive gear spacer and seal. A little caution here, we have an inside and outside of the seal. Where you see the seamed end plate, where you can see it's crimped together from the factory, that will run on the inside. Your outside wants to be a smooth, sealed surface. Henceforward, the double lip seal is in its proper position, where it will work oil inward not allow oil to pass outward. A little assembly lube on the main drive gear spacer. Not a lot, just a little, so the seal isn't dry. Run it around the perimeter. Again, inside first. And I like to, where the locating slot is for the sprocket key, I'll begin with that so I don't tear the seal. Press it in. Now, the drive gear spacer acts as an alignment pilot so the seal doesn't cock. And in turn, it locates on the main drive gear, as you can see here, keeping it perfectly straight or parallel. In turn, with an installation tool, I'm able to come on and dri simply drive the seal in. It's, again, it's piloted off the main drive gear. I'm able to just kind of work it in. And that is it. Nice and straight. It's sealed all the way, you know, 360 degrees of it. And turn. You can check. And then we're not ready to install a sprocket yet, so I, I'll put our installation tool on so this gear doesn't happen to accidentally slip inside and we lose all our needle rollers. Wind that on. And I'm ready now for final assembly. We're going to press this ball bearing on. We're making sure we're, we've got a good purchase in the center. We're on a piece of aluminum so that we're not hurting our main shaft. We're pressing in the central region of the ball bearing only. We want to make sure we come all the way down onto the spool itself. Now we can release it. You'll find in some, some of these different applications, different bearings, you actually sometimes have to double check and push again, making sure your splines and your brooch are up enough where the lock tang will purchase and lock. And then we're able to bring it up so it doesn't rotate. So we're in good shape here. So we've, we just completed pressing on our ball bearing with our, you know, with our respective shield. We want to make sure the tangs for the lock tang will locate in the spline of the main shaft proper. Make sure we're in. There's an inside and an outside to this. I've, over many, over 50 years, I found people installing this downward. It is not, it's upward, this upper piece here. The flat side with a slight washer face goes against the lock tang. And this is normal right hand thread. You can use a deep well socket in this application 
or Ted has this nice piece, you'll notice, as I suggested you do with normal sockets, is dress the face flat. So you purchase on here nice and flat and come on in the soft jaws, never draw it up in a regular vise. Make sure you're in proper. And bring it in good and tight till you lo locate on one flat. Again, in 50 years, I've seen people bend these all up with pliers. One flat, that's how the factory did it. We're close here, so we're gonna come in a little tighter till we line up with one flat. We're perfect here right now. I'll show you. We're ready now to roll that on to the flat. You can see there, Rob. Okay, so we're now gonna lock our tang. Again, we locate in the soft jaws so you don't injure our main shaft. And with an appropriate, it can be a gasket scraper, a small sharpened chisel or whatever, we very carefully locate the lock tang we're gonna utilize lined up with the flat. And so we don't mar things all up, we just kind of carefully locate, as you can see, and roll it forward, neat and clean. Now in turn, we adjust our channel locks, proper dimension, quite large here, and we'll come in and nice and clean, we roll it in against the flat, and that's it, and we're done. Okay, this is our final assembly fixture, which is nothing more than a piece of angle plate welded to a transmission mounting plate. This will allow you to locate in a vise so you're not wrestling with a transmission on a workbench. You can properly set up and build now. Set the transmission in, and you can in turn your, lock, your washers and nuts, you can run them on and go. Okay, so we're gonna now continue our main shaft assembly here. We're gonna move this momentarily out of the, out of the vise. Again, using our soft jaws, we're gonna set our main shaft up And we're going to check our third gear clearance. Set third gear in. Our third gear thrust washer, we want to make sure, in effect, when we're done, we've got proper end play here, that we're not too bound up. So again, I select a respective thrust washer for that. With the, You see the two inside ears, let's call it 12 and 6 o'clock. And we're at... We're at 65 thousandths. We're going to set that in. And as a test only, we'll se select the retaining ring, just place it on in position, and check our end play before we put it all into the crankcase, into the transmission case, excuse me. Now to push that on, rather than cut my hands open, I'll use a shifter dog. And as a tool, I just kind of push it in. Make sure I'm in, and now I check my end play. We're free, and we've got proper end play. Okay? So that, this is a test only. We could not get this into the transmission case. But I'd rather check out here where I can see things. And now I know to just assemble. So now I'll destroy this retaining ring with the removal, and I'm ready now for a final assembly. Now we'll proceed with our final assembly. Transmission goes back into the vise again. We've established 
third gear end play. We select now a new retaining ring. And our shifter clutch, we want to make sure we're in proper alignment. Our cut leads, the stock Harley-Davidson gears years ago would have be marked quickly with the word high. In this case of the aftermarket, we have nothing. So we look physically at our cut leads here, which I like. I like doing that from stock. That'll allow for a slick shift from third to fourth gear or Make sure that we're in proper alignment, as well as with third gear. We want that lead to match the lead cut into gear. We don't want it, it will go on backwards. Put it into position and we're ready. We start with our main shaft assembly that's now completed, ready to go. A little bit of assembly lube where she's gonna run through the bushing so it's not dry. This is a little tricky. Now we got to come through everything at one time here. We set this in. So in other words, we start with our main shaft going through third gear, our thrust washer, and last our retaining ring for that assembly that's going to be affixed to the main shaft. Now our sliding shifter clutch, watching our cut edge, and everything goes through at one time, as you see here. So you have to kind of look at what you're doing here. You're gonna bring this all across everything. The retaining ring with the thrust washer, Third gear coming on as such. Here's our thrust washer. As you can see, I'm gonna line that up with the slots. This is all a little tricky here. Okay, so now we're gonna get our, install our retaining, start our retaining ring. So you see what I'm doing here? Uh, I grab it with a hook and I start working my way onward. Rotate the shaft a little bit. Continue onward, it's a little tricky. Continue onward. Rotate a little more. Continue onward. A little more, see what I'm doing here? Until I'm completely, until I'm completely over the splines as you see here, okay? My thrust washer is already inside third gear. Now I'll take and utilize the shifter dog as a tool rather than continue with picks. See what I'm doing? As I had shown you guys earlier on the bench, locate this in its slot and I'll use that to slide everything over into third gear to make sure that that retaining ring locates in the slot and work our way in. Okay, now we're ready to push this into the case. Warm the case a little beforehand. and we'll drive it in.
Okay, so as I mentioned a moment ago, this is our final installation of the main shaft ball bearing retaining plate. I recommend, strongly recommend a blue Loctite on these. We get them as tight as possible. This again is the oiler spout for the starter clutch assembly. Starter clutch assembly meaning one gear on the starter clutch is stationary, the other has to move. This is countersunk into the retaining plate. It has a little hand or jaw to locate on the edge of the retaining plate. And this is going to be the little piece here that will catch the oil being fanned around as the motorcycle runs and drip it down onto the starter clutch. So we locate that. You see that little hand will kind of clasp at the edge of that retaining plate. We're countersunk for the screw hole. Again, a blue Loctite would be applied to this screw. And we draw it in good and tight. You gotta kinda of stay with it and make sure it doesn't move on you. These are long screws for a reason, so they draw in proper. And good and tight, keeping this in alignment. This wants to be right at 12 o'clock. You don't want that to ride out, say, and rotate with the screw. Good and tight, and you're all set. We're ready to go. Before we begin the final assembly of the counter shaft assembly, I'm just show, giving you guys a rough layout. This is the counter shaft cluster and it is minus the speedometer drive. We, our next session, I can explain how that goes on, how we're gonna push that on, so on and so forth. But anyway, this is the assembly. We've already installed the retaining rings that will capture the inner washers which are the same inside as such. Henceforward, we will grease this inside and manually install the same rollers in each side. So each side will get that thrust washer against the retaining ring. We will then grease the area and manually install the needle rollers themselves. Once that's completed, we've got the assembly of the adjacent gear with its respective bushing. Come on to the cluster itself. We've got its thrust washer with the ears which are inside. Again, they're at 12 and 6. As you can see here, the notches. So we just kind of locate them. They'll fall into place. We will then install the respective retaining ring, we'll open that up, slide that down, and again, like I mentioned earlier on the main shaft, we'll use the shifter clutch as a tool to push that into position, that'll snap in. And then we'll double check and make sure it's locating properly in the recessed groove. Once that is all assembled, I'm just doing this as a dry run, we now have the final gear with its thrust washer, that doesn't locate on notches, <clears throat> that just has oil pockets in it. It'll come on as such. Your end gear with its bushing installed, I already have it pushed in there, as you can see the bronze bushing. I love a 45 hook as such, I can kind of work my weight <clears throat> as we go. There we go. I can kind of push that down. Now I use the shifter clutch as the tool, push it in. Now I double check. I make sure I'm well within the groove. And I make sure I'm smooth. I'm not bound up. So we're good. Now I'll put our shifter clutch on. In the case of this cluster shifter clutch, 
We don't have to worry about any cut leading edge in our case here. It's just straight either side from first, first to second gear. Now I've got our end gear, our thrust washer with the proper holes. I'll just put her down in the position and I'll slide our gear on as such. Now we're ready to grease this. We, we first install our proper inner thrust washer. Flush against the inside retaining ring. I keep kind of feeding some grease to this because we've got to kind of hold these in the position as we move forward. Making sure the backside is stacked against the thrust washer, you know, the inner thrust washer. Add a little more grease. Make sure they're all, they're all rested to the inner surface. Plenty of grease, because they can ride out. You're ready to do the other side. Inner thrust washer against the retaining ring inside. And we start running our rollers right in again. And again, these are standard rollers, 125 thousandths. Okay, we're now going to install our counter shaft assembly into the case as we've just completed our main shaft assembly. So in turn, we'll select the thrust washer I recommend the thinnest to begin, 50 thousandths we've got on hand here. So we'll take the assembly, set it into position, and we'll, we roll it down. As we line up on our sprocket side, Place our counter shaft itself in, not quite all the way through. Now our selected thrust washer, and then I recommend you fabricate a form of a heavy wire with a hooked end, in this case some form of welding rod, or a heavy gauge wire as I say, so this doesn't drop all the way through. You're going to install it on the right side here. Be ready with your hook device to catch it. You can kind of observe it here. And then work your way through. Again, we'll hook it again and kind of lift it and turn it this can be quite testy. Okay, so we're lifting at the bottom at the same time applying pressure to the shaft with my right hand. I'll rotate the assembly semi and I'm able to luckily work my way in with the shaft. Now the graduation for its locking plate should face me or the front of the motorcycle. So I'll rotate it. So it's right about in the three o'clock position here. Check our end play again. We're right down now around 10, 12 thousandths. We're ideal. Okay, install our lock plate. 
Again, the machine flat goes against the main shaft retaining plate. Our lock tang. Our counter shaft nut. Always check just in case there's a washer face. In this case, there's, there is not. So this nut can be installed either way. Factory torque on this is up as much as 100 foot-pounds. I don't care for that. I make it good and tight by feel to where a lock tang lines up and I let it go at that. I found that going in excess of 75 foot-pounds, 65, 75, 80 pounds, foot-pounds, I've actually tore the core out of the lock tang, making it useless. So I just, I don't feel you need that kind of torque. So good, good tight positioning. Line up your flat as such. We're gonna line up this flat right here. We'll take our channel locks, set them, and with one shot, we can roll that right on, good and clean, and we're done. Before we begin the final assembly of the counter shaft assembly, I'm just show, giving you guys a rough layout. This is the counter shaft cluster, and it is minus the speedometer drive. We, our next session, I can explain how that goes on, how we're going to push that on, so on and so forth. But anyway, this is the assembly. We've already installed the retaining rings that will capture the inner washers, which are the same, inside as such. Henceforward, we will grease this inside and manually install the same rollers in each side. So each side will get that thrust washer against the retaining ring. We will then grease the area and manually install the needle rollers themselves. Once that's completed, we've got the assembly of the adjacent gear with its respective bushing. Come on to the cluster itself. We've got its thrust washer with the ears, which are inside. Again, they're at 12 and 6. As you can see here, the notches. So we just kind of locate them. They'll fall into place. We will then install the respective retaining ring. We'll open that up, slide that down. And again, like I mentioned earlier on the main shaft, we'll use the shifter clutch as a tool to push that into position. That'll snap in. And then we'll double check and make sure it's locating properly in the recessed groove. Once that is all assembled, I'm just doing this as a dry run, we now have the final gear with its thrust washer. That doesn't locate on notches. <clears throat> that just has oil pockets in it. It'll come on as such. Your end gear with its bushing installed, I already have it pushed in there. As you can see, the bronze bushing. I love a 45 hook as such. I can kind of work my weight <clears throat> as we go. There we go. I can kind of push that down. Now I use the shifter clutch as the tool, push it in. Now I double check. I make sure I'm well within the groove. And I make sure I'm smooth. I'm not bound up. Now we're good. Now I'll put our shifter clutch on. In the case of this cluster shifter clutch, we don't have to worry about any cut leading edge in our case here. It's just straight either side from first, first to second gear. Now I've got our end gear, our thrust washer. 
with the proper holes. I'll just put her down into position and I'll slide our gear on as such. Now we're ready to grease this. We, we first install our proper inner thrust washer. Flush against the inside retaining ring. I keep kind of feeding some grease to this because we've got to kind of hold these in the position as we move forward. Making sure the backside is stacked against the thrust washer, you know, the inner thrust washer. Add a little more grease. Make sure they're all, they're all rested to the inner surface. Plenty of grease, because they can ride out. You're ready to do the other side. Inner thrust washer against the retaining ring inside. And we start running our rollers right in again. And again, these are standard rollers, 125 thousandths, which must locate in this flat right here. Now, this flat on the exterior must align with the flat on the main shaft plate. So that's the key. So you have to turn that shaft 180 degrees so that they're both flats are parallel. So now that, see how that acts as a lock? That locks here. And it locks here on the counter shaft. And he's ready now for his lock tang and his nut. Now, up here, he had to set end play with that thrust washer that I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. So this has to have end play, this counter shaft assembly. Mm -hmm. You can hear it as I'm rattling it. It cannot be bound. If it's bound, it's going to burn up. Okay, so now our locating plate is properly positioned, as I mentioned a moment ago. Again, utilizing this flat, again, now with our lock tang. Our lock tang has a provision for the flat. We'll set that on as such. And sometimes these counter shaft nuts have a washer face. In this case, it does not. It'll go either way. However, if you see one with a washer face, the washer face goes against the tang. So we will properly thread that on. And now, again, as I mentioned to you earlier on the main shaft, we will tighten this to one of the flats of the nut lines up with a respective tang, one tang only. You don't lock all three, you lock one tang. And then in turn, once we're tight, we adjust our channel lock so that one shot, we're able to pinch that down nice and clean without a lot of claw marks, and we're done. A little bit closer demonstration here of the ratchet top mechanism in respect to the forks to show you exactly how this will function. As a person depresses their foot down for first gear, you'll see how this will swing this fork over into first gear, as you can see here now. Over here on this side, we remain in a neutral stabilized position. Third and fourth are in neutral. It's all done simultaneously on one cam. As this slipped ourselves over to first, this remains in neutral, this long slot. In turn, this would be mounted as such on here. As we move forward now, so I'm gonna toe up now for second gear. I'm gonna pass the neutral slot and go into second. Now in turn, we're still, we still remain on the main shaft in a neutral position. This fork is still centralized 
the, with the dogs between third and fourth gear. However, now we've shifted over to my right toward the sprocket or primary into second gear. Again, that keeps the main shaft in neutral. Now in turn, we wanna go into high. So as I tow up again, I'm now, I've neutralized first and second here, and I've worked my way into third gear on the main shaft. Now, counter shaft arrangement is in a neutral position, as you can see here in the box. And then last but not least, to go tow up one more time into high, I've swung over into high gear. I've swung my way to my far left into high gear. That's where it's so critical that these shifter forks be shimmed in a proper neutralized position at all times. Okay, today at the motor shop, I'm going to elaborate a little more on our shifter fork arrangements. This can prove to be quite complicated uh, to the, you know, your average individual. Uh, my recommendation, if you're running a shop or something and you're getting into building several four-speed boxes, it wouldn't hurt for you to have a set of standards, a set of forks on a shelf set up that you can use as a guideline that are pre-assembled that you know are known good pieces. Now, they're not a fits-all, but we can get these so close for you today, you might have to add maybe five or ten thousandths or seven thousandths to one side, whatever have you, to dial into your specific box that you're going to utilize. But my recommendation is to have a set of these on a wire on your shelf if you're doing quite a bit of this, um, where you can just kind of glance at them, take them down, glance at them, and go ahead and use these for your guideline as a mock-up, because it does get quite involved. So working with V-twin number 170490, which is a kit with all the respective components to go for both counter shaft and main shaft, the larger being the counter shaft, the larger fork, the counter shaft, of course, the smaller fork. Another thing to bear in mind, your finger roller studs face each other. They're gonna be installed in the transmission so they're near each other. Your counter shaft arrangement basically functions almost horizontal, whereas your main shaft assembly is working vertical, as shown here. You can see right in, and your counter shaft, as I said, is pretty much, pretty much horizontal. Now, to lay these out, I'm gonna demonstrate, we'll do one at a time here. You wanna end up with an overall rough measurement. That when I say this is a rough measurement, but this is gonna get you so close, it's not funny. I'm measuring from the machine surface of the finger roller stud boss itself, not the, not the spool collar, but I'm gonna measure, take my measurement from the edge of that to the outside edge of the lock nut. And I'm right at 80 thousandths, right around 79, 80 thousandths. So that would be one inch, 80 thousandths. About one inch, 79 thousandths, one inch, 80 thousandths. That's the edge of the finger roller stud, the boss itself to it to the outer edge of that jam nut. That's where I'm coming in. Now the trick to this, we're talking now, of course, this is the main shaft assembly, the smaller fork, the main shaft assembly. Now the trick to this is, again, your finger roller with its spacing washer and thrust washers, okay, is running on the inside of the fork. There is an offset kick to this. So I'm gonna break this loose, and just give you an idea 
what to look for. So we'll first remove the lock nut, the lock tang itself. You see the tit at the bottom to locate in the slot. in the finger roller sleeve itself. Now you'll notice, let's call the finger roller stud 12 o'clock. You've got a slightly offset kick toward the back. So you'd want to watch for that because you can easily turn this around and install it the wrong way. Now it's kicking forward. It's not going to go into the box proper. So let's put it back where we were. And I'll give you an idea what to look for here. So you can see the elongated slot. You'll find the, let's call it the key on the fork. And you'll notice it's roughly at about five o'clock in the hole. So that's gonna give it, if we use our stud, our finger roller stud as a guideline, that's gonna throw the fork back when we're facing this. Now, sliding this off the boss, you see the finger roller stud boss just slides on the sleeve itself. So in other words, this is at 12 o'clock. Our key slot itself is at six o'clock. So our stacked shims that we have here, along with our spacing washer, you can quickly do, put them together. The spacing washer should go against the finger roller boss itself. But our, our stacked arrangement as a beginning point measures roughly 151 thousandths, 150 to 151 thousandths the whole stack. So again, we'll just slip that on. Install our piece. Again, our, this is the main shaft, so she's kicking backward. Finger roller stud is at 12 o'clock. We now install our lock tang. Make sure it locates in the key slot a little tricky. The recessed end, of course, on our jam nut goes toward the assembly to allow things to encase within it. And we can kind of just snug that up good by hand. We don't have to go crazy with it. Good by hand. And that's ready for a mock-up assembly. Now we'll work our way to the counter shaft. Again, the counter shaft, finger roller on the inside, so it would face its respective main shaft piece, as I demonstrated earlier. We'll take a measurement of the overall dimension. And again, I'm measuring from the outer nut surface to the inner flange, excuse me, the outside flange here of the finger roller boss. This is just a rough idea to get you started. And we're about Not quite one inch. We're like 94 to 95 thousandths for the overall stack, as you can see here. So 
Again, as I mentioned earlier, the finger roller stud on the counter shaft at 12 o'clock high. Your fork itself for the counter shaft wants to run vertical toward me, facing from this end, from the nut end. Also, you'll notice there's a wider graduation in this fork, running downward itself, as you can see here. That's going to be downward from the finger roller stud. This is just to give you a rough start. We'll back that off. Lock tang again. Again, as I mentioned earlier, your finger roller stud is at 12 o'clock, the key slot is at 6 o'clock. The counter shaft fork has a larger graduation which faces the bottom towards 6 o'clock, as I'm showing you here. So I'll just temporarily lift that off for a moment. And you see the key slot to join that at 6 o'clock. You've got our spacing washer and our shims. In this case, we didn't even need a spacing washer. We've just got a stack of shims here to get you started. We'll give a rough measurement here. We're 70 thousandths in shims. And to show you, there's the key slot. Six o'clock, there's the key at six o'clock and I'm holding the finger roller stud. So we'll put it right back together again. Our stack of shims, our fork running horizontal. The key from the fork goes into the slot down at six o'clock. Our lock tang with its tit to the key slot, our recess to the nut facing the lock tang and the threaded boss itself. So again, we don't have interference. Thread that, make sure that key slot stays in position on the lock tang, doesn't ride out as you're tightening. We'll then snug this by hand. You're ready for assembly. So this gets you so close, you'll either, we'll demonstrate in a little while here, you'll either have to add or subtract a shim or two at the most, but this, this gets you so close. And the trick is, these things can be, be invertedly put in the wrong position. This could be flipped around, you won't get it in the box proper as such. This is critical, this, this arrangement is critical, as you can see here. At 12 o'clock, this is being kicked back roughly at about a 7 o'clock position as you're facing me here, clockwise. That way, hence, you can come right in for a proper throw on the main shaft. Again, the counter shaft is about horizontal. Its large web or graduation is down towards 6 o'clock. You'll come in on the counter shaft shifter dog. We're now ready to run our shaft right through. We'd add our finger rollers and we begin our test process in respect to our ratchet top. And that's it for now. Okay, in effect, which, what makes these shift this was quite ingenious. This, this was designed close to well over 90 years ago, almost 100 years ago now. About in the early 30s, this, this design came about with this cam roller arrangement. Basically what this will do in a neutralized position, this in effect, this fork as this cam revolves will roll and shift left to right, as you can see here. In this case, in my foot action, as I'll depress for first gear, okay, this will actually 
bring me this fork over, in effect, over into first gear. Now I'm still sitting. As I in turn, will go into second, it will momentarily neutralize and work its way into second gear. Just by this roller arrangement running through this trough in the cam. So this is the utmost importance that this is smooth on your fork arrangement and your dowel, that, that must be extremely smooth. And in effect, as I said, will roll clean in each trough. Third and fourth gear are over in the cam slot on the right in my drum here. Again, it will momentarily, when we've gone from first to second, We'll momentarily neutralize to work our way to third and then to fourth, to high. This is with the narrower fork swinging its way over into high gear, over on your right here. So it's quite, in, quite ingenious. Now what applies a little tension here, inside here we have what's called a detent plug, it's a spring with a little piece which will kind of form a little pressure on the far reaches of the cam here, allowing things to stabilize as we ratchet into position. This arrangement itself, the ratchet top arrangement itself was introduced in 1952. It started out basically as this arrangement, pulling from the bottom. In 1974, they came out with this arrangement, pulling from the top on the model FX or Super Glide. But the basics of this began as far as the foot shift arrangement for Harley Davidson started in 1952. So we're now going to lock down our cover proper. I'll start with the two long studs. Notice these have a long shank where they're going to extend to the upper portion of, in this case, a ratchet top. I recommend on the shoulder itself, I prefer myself a little anti-seize or a grease. Just a light coating on that shank because you've got a long extended steel piece going through aluminum and in time over the road that will oxidize and rust and they can be terrible at points to extract in the future. So I recommend either either anti-seize or a light assembly grease, just a light coating on the shank itself. Now we'll start with our shorter pieces. And then there's another point here I want to put in place. Ventilation. We have two forms of ventilation. This particular cover I like very much has the 1940 and earlier style vent in the cover itself. I'm pointing to it right now. This remanufactured case has the blind boss where in 1941 and later that little vent is moved over to this position here. This being a later retro case, we'll utilize, we could utilize a vent stud. This is bored right through the center and then out the side as a vent. That would locate in this case, say we didn't have this cover where this was just a regular blind cover as we see here, without a vent, we've got no vent in position, so we've got to ventilate our transmission. So we locate this, there's a specific location behind the dowel. Here's our locating dowel. This will locate right here toward the back of the motorcycle. And that's where this locates. That goes in an open 
area to get plenty of air. And that's, that's the proper location for that. And then we just continue around with our shorter pieces as such. Now, depending on the owner or the rider, uh, if it's someone who's gonna do a lot of riding in different weather conditions and such, I'd recommend even a little anti-seize around this shoulder. I've seen these seize right up where I've gotta heat the cover to get them out. So you can actually, I wouldn't the entire threads, you can, but you definitely to anti-seize under that shoulder and then bring them down in. Then you'll wipe off the excess material. And that's basically it. Okay, we're gonna to cover today at the motor shop a critical, probably about the most critical area uh, in the kickstart assembly of a four-speed transmission. And that's the stationary clutch gear arrangement to the main shaft. Today, with many various aftermarket people producing this, both the USA and abroad, we have problems with this. I'm going to show you today a fast check. Clean, dry main shaft taper, clean, dry gear, whatever you've purchased, just with no key or anything, draw it onto the main shaft by hand. Set your scale. Machinist scale for five eighths of an inch. From the surface of this, outer surface of the clutch gear, the stationary gear for the Kickstarter, to the gasket surface, we want to be flush at five eighths of an inch. You can see here that I'm over an additional eighth inch here. We'll select another. We'll, we'll discard that. I'll explain why. We'll try another. Notice right off the bat, I've got, I'm showing more threads on the main shaft just by setting that on with a brief change. My scale, I haven't changed. I'm at 5 eighths of an inch. I come to the surface and I'm perfectly resting on the gasket surface of the transmission case. That's what you want. If not, that'll allow your moving gear coming outward further, making contact with the striker plates and even the gear itself of your main kickstart gear. Not good. This is a check that must be done whenever you're installing a kickstarter kit. So we're going to apply a little grease to the main shaft itself, the inner part of the main shaft itself. I'm going to try to keep the taper clean to some degree. I've snapped my spring on the back side, the back lip, opposite of course, common sense, the ratchet itself, the ratchet teeth itself. I'll slide it into position. Now you notice I've got my key slot is up at 12 o'clock. Slide my key into place, into position. Then I'll kind of allow my gear to come forward somewhat to allow a, you know, me a backstop as I slide my clutch gear on. This is tricky, of course. Kind of move that into position so the teeth mate proper. Holding it in, it's a little tricky. Now my lock tang. I'll feed into position, into the key slot, as you can see there. My outer main shaft nut, some come with a washer face. The washer face, of course, would go against the lock tang and the clutch gear. So we're going to run that on by hand. At the same time, notice I'm holding all this together. Okay, now you notice I've left the top off purposefully so I can lock my transmission into two gears at once, allow me easy access to, in tightening my nut.
come into position here. There, I'm locked. I'm locked in high and I'm locked in first. Now I can comfortably do this. If this were in a motorcycle, I would do this with air. In this case, I'm on a bench building a new assembly. I can just come on here. Good and tight. Now I'm going to neutralize and I'm going to rotate and find an area where I've got plenty of lip on that lock tang, which is only basically a thin strip. Even or perpendicular to a flat, I'll come on with a good strong, like a gasket scraper or a fine, you know, dressed chisel locate and do a clean fold down even with the flat. Now I'm going to adjust my channel locks for a proper spread to this. And I'm going to come on with one good clean shot and roll that down proper. And that's it. Our assembly is now complete. That can't come off. We're locked into place. We've already performed our measurement check. We're good to go here. Okay, so we're locked. We've locked her in good. Select an area where we've got a good flat to come down. One area, not a multitude of areas. Let's select a good area right here at this flat. Nice and even. I've got a good gasket cutter here. I, I slightly roll it as I strike it to give it a factory-like look. I'm good and clean. I can actually lean it a little more. As you can see here, I've almost rolled it all the way around. I can adjust my channel locks again, proper. And again, one shot. I'm done. Okay, now tightening again, I start in the center. Work my way across in the center diagonally. That draws the gasket out into proportion here. Again, across diagonally. Right across. Now my center pieces. and I'm good to go. Now, our detent plug, you see here, you notice I haven't locked the tangs. We're set into position here for locking. Your large ears on your detent plug must form to the housing. Keep this from backing off, especially once this is installed in the motorcycle itself. That's in a tough location to get at later. So we're locked into position here We'll draw the large ears back against the housing itself. Set my channel locks. Come in and roll against the housing itself. Neat and clean, one clean shot. In this case, we lock the two because that way it works as an axis. In this case here, now we only have to lock one. We'll come on to this one, which is located in direct alignment with the flat here. We'll come on. One clean shot, and we're done. This cannot rotate. This cannot rotate. We're now ready to finalize with our kickstart and throw-out bearing assembly. <laughs>